San Pedro Sula has the highest murder rate in the world. But it has another claim to fame. In just four months, two and a half thousand unaccompanied children from this city have been arrested crossing illegally into the United States. I'm in the toughest part of town, Chamelecon. This place seems to be pretty undeveloped and the buildings look really quite basic and it's like everyone's living on top of each other. It feels very claustrophobic. This part of Chamelecon is controlled by the Mara Salvatrucia gang. We've had to get their permission to film and out of sight, they're watching every move we make. I've come to meet Hector, an extraordinary head teacher. Hola. Muy bien, muy bien. Mucho gusto. Vamos a entrar? Sí, sí, vamos. Sí. Pura fidelidad a la bandera nacional. Símbolo de la justicia, libertad y paz. Hector wants to convince his kids that education is the way to get a future. Viva Honduras. Only 10% of Honduras' poorest kids get through school. But Hector's determined to turn many of these children into university graduates. Children like Roberto. Three months ago, he tried to get into the US illegally. Then there's Yeleni, who wants to be the first person in her family to go to university. And Brian, torn between the need to start earning money and his dreams of college. Hector believes education will give these kids the confidence needed to resist the gangs. Cuando ellos están aquí, ellos piensan en el fútbol, piensan en la educación y se les va formando un sueño de que algún día van a ser grandes personas en el futuro. O lo más seguro que puede ser la muerte, pues, andar en lo de las calles. The Mara Salvatrucha gang are fighting a rival gang, Barrio 18, for control of Chamelecon. And the rest of the city of San Pedro Sula. Lo repetimos de seis personas muertas pertenecientes a una pandilla que opera en la ciudad de San Pedro Sula. The violence started building a decade ago when Honduras became a major route for smuggling cocaine into the US. I've come to Roberto's house. I want to find out more about why he tried to escape to America with his mum, Marta. Entra. Hola, Roberto, ¿qué pasa? Buenos días, buenos días. Entre. Gracias. As well as his mum, Roberto's six brothers and sisters also live here. ¿Qué tal? Mira con tu chandal de Arsenal. Es tu equipo. West Ham. Roberto explains that when he's not at school, he stays indoors. He's desperate not to get on the wrong side of the gangs. His cousin was recently murdered. <laughs> Yeah. The gangs pressure kids like Roberto to join and kill them if they refuse. Eight teenagers were recently executed just a few streets away. And me voy porque yo quiero salir de aquí. Yo quiero salir de este ambiente porque imagines ellos andalo cuidando y y aquí es aquí casi todo pues son sí son así. I'm learning that in Chamelecon, people are too frightened to even use the word gang. Has gastado mucho dinero para ir a Estados Unidos. Diez mil dólares. Diez mil dólares. Mi hermana lo mandó. Pero dólares de Estados Unidos. Estados Unidos. Pues sí, ese quedó el coyote con él. Roberto and his mum 
only made it as far as Mexico before they were caught and bussed home. 70% of all child migrants apprehended at the US border are from Honduras. Six thirty, and fourteen-year-old Yeleni is getting ready for school. She's just weeks from the exams that will allow her to go on to senior school and perhaps university. Antes de de hacer todo, oro. Le oro a Dios por darme un día más de vida. She too has been affected by violence. La banda se agarró con la otra en un tirazón y hay uno de aquí que no tienen armas, sino que solo andan vigilando. Y entonces él andaba vigilando allá por donde cuadra y bueno, y le dispararon y lo mataron. ¿Has tenido miedo? Sí, mucho miedo. The murder made Yeleni's mum and dad think about leaving for the US, but for now they've decided against it. <laughs> they want Yeleni to concentrate on school and her plans for the future. The school's called Caminando por la Paz, Walking for Peace. It's special because unlike most schools around here, it keeps teaching no matter how bad the violence gets. It's funded by Catholic churches in America and school fees of $15 a month. Head teacher Hector helped to build it. Este era un era un basurero. Sí, un basurero. todo ese. Era un basurero. Wow. Y entonces el dueño ellos optaron a que nosotros limpiáramos, nosotros cuidáramos y yeah, yeah, yeah. y prestaron. Y así es, es como hemos trabajado tres años. The state-run schools in Chamelecon are in crisis. They're often shut because of strikes or because gang violence leaves teachers too frightened to turn up. Nearby, Hector shows me how bad things can get. This is one of the largest state schools and it's simply been abandoned. People every day are killed here. How's your school able to survive in this area which has so much violence, especially when a school like this has been closed down? Nuestra escuela, uno de los de los puntos claves es que es un milagro de Dios. Es Dios el que está ahí. Y nunca has tenido un trato con un pandilla. No, es que no no tenemos este tipo de problemas porque nosotros trabajamos positivamente. No trabajamos nada en que puede perjudicar a las maras. What none of the people I've met want to talk about gangs. The moment I bring up the subject, you know, you can feel the fear. You can see the fear. Even Hector refuses to admit that it's a problem. It's like this whole community has been traumatized. Fifteen-year-old Brian is another of Hector's hand-picked students. The school offers just 40 slum kids education that they can't get in the chaotic state system. And like his friends, Brian keeps safe by rarely going out. Brian lives with his mum Patricia, stepdad Carlos, and his sister Ruth. So orgulloso de de tu. Claro que sí, de los dos ellos, porque ese es el objetivo, pues si eso es lo que les queda a ellos el estudio, verdad? Y por por ahorita, pues gracias a Dios va muy bien en las notas. 
El sueño, el sueño es que terminen su estudio y se preparen, pues. Porque ya nosotros, ella y yo, pues nosotros ya, ya hicimos lo que íbamos a hacer y, y de ahora la oportunidad es de ellos. Mucha gente de Honduras intenta vivir en Estados Unidos. ¿Te ¿Has querido viajar ahí? Sí, he pensado viajar para una mejor calidad de vida para ellos mismos. Mm. Brian una vez me, me, me decía, mami, si en alguna oportunidad me, me saliera una oportunidad que yo pudiera viajar y, y usted me apoyaría, claro que sí. Patricia explains she's yeah. lost her job as a social worker. And Brian's worried she won't be able to pay the school fees for him and his sister. ¿Qué pasa? A veces eh, ella está trabajando y mirando en la mañana me puedo pensar que, eh, qué pasará, cuál será mi futuro. Que en Honduras no hay oportunidad, no hay oportunidad a los jóvenes. Los trabajos son escasos. Ahora en todos los colegios cobran mensualidad y no todas las personas pueden pagar una mensualidad alta. Are you happy? Es usted feliz? Uh, yes, I am happy. No, I am not happy. <coughs> Next morning, Brian and Ruth practice their English before school. How do you find this morning? ¿Cómo se siente esta mañana? Happy. Yo lo toca toda el día inglés. Aburrido. Allá se va. Brian's protective of his little sister and walks her to school every day. I'm going to be my mother and my sister because I know that now women are the force to do things that they don't want. And my mother also can be... There are times when they get caught in the mares, so now I can be buying and I can buy a bad one. It's very dangerous to lose it. Thank you for giving me life for us. Ayano día a día, a ser mejores. Gracias por cada tutor. En el nombre de Jesús, te lo pedimos. Amén. Vaya, este es tuyo. Ah, este fue bien. Ven el tono, andado. This morning is double maths. División con decimales. Antes de poder resolver esta división, yo lo voy a multiplicar por 10. But Brian's not concentrating. I'm realizing he's got a lot to deal with. Mi padre era mujeriego, se infectó de VIH. Cuando se puso a mi madre se enteró, entonces ya nadie lo quiso apoyar a él. Entonces vino mi madre, lo apoyó hasta donde ya pudo, hasta donde él murió. Entonces yo lo vi morir a él y lo tengo presente siempre. Y cuando quieres hacer un éxito, un logro, haces esto para tu padre. Sinceramente, lo hago por sentirme mi yo mismo. Y porque yo sé que él me está viendo arriba. Hey. Yo siento, yo siento, Brian. All the kids here have been touched by violence. Roberto, who just tried to go to America, tells me about when his cousin was murdered. Le hicieron un chajazo aquí, aquí. No, no. A mataron. ¿Quién has matado? No sé, ahí la verdad. Como veo, casi no sé llorar. Yo no puedo llorar. Do you feel 
as a kid, these are supposed to be your best years. You know, and I know there's children all over the world that go through tough times, but it feels like their times are multiplied here. You know, and when you throw on top of that, the fact that they have to deal with the violence and gangs, you sometimes wonder how they cope. Back at home, Brian's mum, Patricia, tells him the news he doesn't want to hear. El próximo año no lo pondría en el mismo colegio, verdad, por la situación económica, que yo no tengo un empleo y no voy a poder pagar la matrícula de los dos. Y si no no puedo ir a a tu escuela o tu colegio el próximo año, ¿qué cómo se siente de ti? Estoy a distancia y trabajar. A trabajar. ¿De qué? Cualquier costo. Cualquier costo que genere dinero. Él sabe, ellos, ellos muy bien saben que yo los adoro, que son mi vida. Brian's mom says she will talk to Hector to see if he can help. Yeleni is revising hard for her exams and the big presentation she's got to make as part of her coursework. Yeleni's feeling confident about her grades and going to senior school next term. But her teacher Isis says there's a problem. The only senior school still open is on rival gang territory. And yes, we have a high school, one high school. One high school. And crossing the gang front lines is impossible. Porque los de esta comunidad no pueden cruzar hasta donde está la escuela secundaria por problemas antisociales. What the antisocial problem? Gangs, member. I understand. If there was a high school in another area that the children from this community wanted to go, they can't go because it's in another gang land area. Yeah. Nothing simple for the kids here. But Hector has a plan to help Yeleni and her classmates. He wants to build a new senior school so these kids don't have to risk their lives to get an education. Hector's taking me to a new building, uh, which is going to be the secondary school. It's going to be for the older kids. So this school could probably make the difference and change things in this area. With money from an American donor, Hector's been able to buy this building and is now trying to convert it into a senior school. ¿Qué, qué pasa, pasa en este cuarto? Este cuarto, ¿qué vas a tener? Bueno, aquí es, va a ser una aula de clases. Aquí vamos a romper y vamos a hacer cuatro años. Ahí solo hay un sanitario. ¿Estás contenta con todo ese? Por supuesto que sí. Hace seis años estábamos trabajando, trabajando para que nos cumpliera este sueño. Para arreglar todo, pues, esperamos los milagros de Dios siempre. <laughs> but Hector's always having to hustle to raise more money for the new school and his students. Si pudieran colaborar, sería para la educación de los, de los estudiantes y recordar, pues, que aquí hay bastantes necesidades. Brian gets called into Hector's office. A mí me gustaría quedarme aquí estudiando, pero como la profesora Brenda dice que se va a pagar una mensualidad, entonces no creo poder quedarme porque como somos dos, entonces son más gastos. Es real, ya está arreglado el tuyo. Ya. De verdad. El año 2015 está arreglado. <laughs> es la realidad. Por eso yo te. No por eso, por eso yo te digo de que es real. Pues gracias. Sí. La idea mía es que ustedes puedan soñar de estar en la universidad en el futuro. Ahora sí es muy claro de que la persona que es beneficiada con un paquete de estos dentro del colegio, esta persona tiene que repagarlo con trabajo en la comunidad, porque el trabajo en la comunidad cuenta mucho. 
It's the day of Yeleni's big presentation. Buenos días, compañeros y compañeras y maestras presentes. Yo les vengo a hablar un poco sobre la vocación. Todos nosotros nos debemos preguntar a nosotros mismos. ¿Cuál es mi vocación? ¿Cuál es el talento que a mí me gusta? She's chosen a subject close to these kids' hearts. How to fulfill your ambitions, whatever they are. Usted tiene que elegir la vocación que a usted le gusta. No la que gana más dinero, la más corta, o la que a sus padres le gusta. Gracias. Yeleni's nailed it, which bodes well for her results. Hector's rolled out the school minibus and he's taking some of the children for their annual trip to the countryside. We're going on a school trip to a place called Fienda de Monte Cristo. And as you can see, these guys are really excited. For two days, the kids won't have to be frightened of violence. Quiero que se sientan desahogados, no serios ni nada, divertidos, porque de eso se trata, de venirse a desestresar. Pero vamos a tener que realizar algunas pequeñas actividades que se realizan en el campo. ¿Quién tiene hambre? Cau, cau. Ah, no tengo nada. Ven, ven con leche. Sí. Adi, llegaste para allá. <laughs> this is what your childhood should be about, good memories and just having fun. Brian's more cheerful than I've ever seen him thanks to his new scholarship. <laughs> and Yeleni's full of optimism, certain that Hector will get the new senior school up and running in time for when she graduates. Has bebido casi todo, eh? Hector's transforming the lives of these kids. He hopes that rather than joining the exodus of illegal immigrants to America, they'll stay and transform their violent neighborhood and Honduras itself. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.